Well, he's worked with people like Jennifer Lopez and Chris Brown, and for this top music producer, his journey to success began in the Bronx. From singer Trey Songz to rapper Rick Ross. Some of today's hottest artists have one thing in common, this man on the drums. Welcome to Worldwide Entertainment TV, and I am your New York host, Miss Goldie, and that's Miss Goldie to you. And we so live right now at YouTube Space New York. And I got the ultimate, 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 ultimate. Wow. platinum producer, Mr. Amadeus. Hi, Amadeus. How are you? <laughs> Say hi to everyone. He's, he's looking at me like that, but it's such my pleasure to even have a sit down with him. He is one of the long time industry I mean, he's done so much in the music industry. And when you can reach out to people like this that have been in the game 10, 20 years plus, it's such a pleasure. So, Amadeus, um, tell everyone where you're from and who you are. Amadeus, as you mentioned, and you gave me such an amazing, <laughs> such amazing intro. Really, really, you know, you know, I, don't, I don't have much to add to that, but um, like you said, um, CEO Platinum Boy Music Inc., uh, multi-platinum bad boy hitman producer, uh, also Trey Songz, his music director, tour drummer. I've been with Trey for the last 10 years. Um, we get ready to go on tour, uh, the Tremaine tour in May. Um, been, I produce for over 70 artists, ranging from J-Lo, uh, Justin Bieber, Chris Brown, Fab, Dipset, G-Unit, um, the list goes on and on. Most likely heard the music he's produced. Chris Brown. Jennifer Lopez. Keisha Cole. So it's been a, it's been a long grind, a long run. And I'm glad to still be here. Blessed to still be doing what I love to do. And it has been a long grind. And with that long grind being spoken, how to you has the music industry changed in the Man. past two decades? Especially as a producer. Um, and one of the things that you know people ask me about all the time is what you're asking, what's, what's changed, and just the fact of not being able to go in the studio as we used to. You know, artists and, and producers were going into the studio and, and kind of vibe and, and connect and really build and really create dope songs together. Right. And nowadays, you know, that chemistry is not really there anymore. It's turned into the business where us producers are sending beats via email and, and so online. You, and you basically don't even know the artist. Nah, you have really. no chance to vibe, communicate right. with the artist. So the music, I know when I was out there making music, I considered it to be kind of like, I would use the acronym of making a baby. Mm -hmm. It was the mm -hmm. beat, mm -hmm. it was me, and it was the track. And right. the song was the baby. That's absolutely. We made the baby. Absolutely. So tell me... Um, a scenario of uh, the worst experience you have ever had with an artist? Honestly, I really haven't had any negative or bad experiences. Um, knock on wood. Not really challenging. Um, challenging. Um, me, I would say me as a music director right. uh, for a, an, an, a major artist. Uh, like Trey songs, it's, it's can be very challenging because my job is to is to understand what his vision is and what he wants to create on stage and and help bring that to life. So That's do not you, the easiest thing. To so do. do you totally create his project or do you just mastermind his tour and what he's going to perform and yes. what he's going to present to the audience? Yes, I'm responsible for helping him put together the best show possible for his audience and fans. Um, so like I said, that can be, you know, very challenging because at the end of the day, what do what what do the audience want to hear? What do the fans right. want to hear? You don't know. So each time you put together a show, you're putting together something you feel they want to hear or something right. that you think they want to hear. But um, you're not sure. You're not sure. So you just kinda gotta go out there and fill it out and and hope for the best and, and once you're out there kind of you know, pay attention to what the audience reacts to, um, and, and get an idea of what they like, you know, what they're not too crazy over, and, and you adjust. And you know what, I never actually knew 
that that was a job or a position oh, yeah. that and it's very important. Like sure. I don't yeah. want to fucking go to a concert <laughs> and hear all the songs I don't like right. of yours. Right. Like you know, as an artist. We don't have songs for everybody, like every mm-hmm. song. Right. But That's we true. do got those popping hits. Oh, yeah. So, I didn't even, wasn't aware that they had a team. Oh, absolutely. That decides what the popping hits are. And, I, and I'm glad, uh, just to, not to cut you off, but I'm glad you brought that up because it's a very important uh, point you brought up. There's right. A, there's a team. It's a team. Everybody, every, every artist, every label, even, you know, if it's not music, even if it's actors or actresses, everybody has a team. Right. And you see that artist uh, or producer in the forefront and behind that artist and producer there's a there's a full team that 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 helps push them. There's a team that right. helps them think, you know, you, you can't figure it out on your own. You right. know what I mean? No one has all of the answers. So when you put together a, an amazing team to, that surrounds you to help you bring the to bring the breast the best out of you as an artist or producer, whatever you are, that's how it works. And you know what, for an artist as you giving advice as a pioneer, as a veteran, to new artists that's coming out. How important is a team? How important is a budget? Um, I don't know about the budget part because you know there's there's the game has changed, mm-hmm. um, and and there's a lot of bartering going on. There's a lot of you know I'll do this, you do this for me. You know whether uh, you know I, I teach producers all the time. It's not always about a check. Right. You know, it's everybody not. is not cutting checks. You're not you know especially not having a name or a huge resume, you know, so figure out a way where you can, you know, give your music or, or have an artist that you love, you know, create a song and put it out and figure out a way where that artist can return the love. Why not get a 16? Why not get a 16 and, right. you know, if you have your own artist, you can put the 16 or Ross or whoever you're working with on the album or you can put your own album out like a Khaled, you know, or, or different producers like that. So it's always a way. It's just about being smart about it and, and figuring out how to benefit yourself. And as a part of your grind with producers coming out, I know a lot of producers quit and give up because they make beats for people, they give out beats for people, mm-hmm. and they, they give, give, give. Mm-hmm. And I know as a producer, mm-hmm. you gave, gave, gave. Mm-hmm. And it's very rarely, like maybe one out of fucking 40 artists mm-hmm. might really pop off right. and come back and give you a check. Right. But in the meantime, you've worked for 39 artists that didn't produce anything mm-hmm. for you, they didn't give mm-hmm. you anything. Mm-hmm. So as a producer, how is that grind for you? Like, does it change your, your loyalty? Does it change your aspect? Like, how do you deal with people after the fact? Is it just like, cut me a check mm-hmm. before I mess with you? Right. Or how does that go? I mean, each situation is different. Um, everybody's situation is not the same. Mm-hmm. Um, so what I do with, you know, how I work with Fab is, you know, could be possibly different how I work with a Chris Brown. You know, so you gotta kind of go into each situation differently, and 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 allowing uh, that person an opportunity to present whatever they're gonna present to you. Right. Um, but you know, for me, it's, it's it's the passion. It's the passion to do what I love to do, and that's create, you know, great music. So even if there's something out right now that may have not paid me anything, or that I haven't gotten anything financial from it, you know, my credit is my credit. You know, right. It's, it's obvious, obviously added to my resume, and it's a song that's out for the people to enjoy. You know, there's right. songs that people love that I produced that might not be a big, the biggest song for me or, or a hit record, or I might might not even think it's one of my, you know, best tracks. Right. But, you know, to fans and to people who appreciate music, it could be different. And I've heard people say, oh, this is my favorite song you did for Mike Jones, Grandma. And I'm like, yeah. He's like, yeah, because, you know, my grandma passed too. Like, so I didn't care about that song. Oh, no, no, I definitely care. No, 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 I definitely care. <laughs> <laughs> that, that song earned me my first platinum plaque. Really? Yes, yes. Mike Jones sold one wait one point five million records. And you know what? Mike Jones is an underrated artist. Absolutely. We haven't heard from Mike Jones. Absolutely. We haven't heard anything from Mike Jones. Mm-hmm. But when he came out, he came out strong. Yes. Do you have any advice to these artists that are up and coming? Because you've been in the game for a minute. You mm-hmm. watch the time change. Mm-hmm. You watch the game change. Do you have any advice for the new artists that are coming out? Yeah, I, I feel like, you know, all artists and, and producers as well, you know, should be themselves. Right. Um, I feel it's the, it's the best way to be is how you're able to connect with the world. The world want to know who you are. You know, why should I support you? Why should I buy your album? Why should I show up to your shows? Why should I purchase your, mer- you know, your merchandise? Who are you? And for me, I feel like the artists that show them true, their true selves to the world are successful. 
Right. You know, when you think of Trey Songz, Trey Songz loves women. So, he, he invented that. That's his you know, like that. <laughs> so, um, you've been in the game a long time. Mm -hmm. Tell us what you are doing now and how we can get in contact with you. Um, a lot. A lot. Um, you know, like you said, I've been in the game for a while. I know uh, the ins and outs, the do's and the don'ts. Um, so, we created a platform uh, called the Music 101 College Tour. We would go around and we educate people in the music business. We tell them mm -hmm. what you need to do, how to do it, how we've done it, how we've succeeded, what to do, what not to do. You right. know, if, 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 you know, we've been in the game, we've both been in the game for a long time and, and it's tough, it's not easy. You know, it's a lot of uh, road, you know, roadblocks. There's a lot of people who try to close doors and stop you from getting in. Slam them in your face, I'm like, sure. So you gotta be able to, you know, look at that slam door in your face and use that as motivation. And figure out a way through that door. Whether you got to kick it down, whether you got to make your own key, you know what I'm saying. And you know what, New York, I'm gonna say I've been in the South, I've been on the East Coast, I've been on the West Coast. In New York, you are the main violators of <laughs> slamming doors in people's faces. Like who was slamming door in Amadeus face? Like he been out here grinding, he been out here working. Who was slamming door in my face? Right. But truth is. They're slamming doors because you know what? Mm -hmm. You so busy trying to keep that one pork chop for yourself that you, you should just stop eating pork and let's eat vegetables together. Mm. You try to keep that one pork chop for yourself that he can't get a piece of the pork right, chop. Right. I can't get a piece of the crumbs. And this is no pork chop. She going, can't right? get it under the rice. Like what's up though? It's true. New Yorkers, the industry are slamming doors. Trust and believe. Yeah. I'm from Yorkers. They slammed the door in my that. face. Yorkers first lady. But I'm a dance. What good. advice do you have to any new artist coming up in the industry and how can they holler at you? Be you, man. Like simple. I don't I don't need no we don't need no sermon. We don't need no whole spell. Just be you. Be you the, the real you. Be the real you, show the world who you are. You know what I'm saying? This this is how you, you gain fans, it's how you gain people to support your music and what you do, be you. Um, you can reach me on Twitter, producer Amadeus. You can reach me on IG, Amadeus PBM, Platinum Boy Music on uh, IG. We got the website, www.platinumboymusicworldwide.com. JB, hey, Jason Bourne is in the building, Basquiat. Jason Bourne in the building. You know what I mean? So we, we working, man. We not playing out here, we working. They, he never lives. been playing, he never been playing. When I've been doing my first round of showcases 15 years ago, yeah. Amadeus was the South judge, South right? South. You remember you was the judge at the South no, Mike? He, he brought, he brought that. Yeah, yeah, yeah. I he won. Was, I was waiting. For I him. won. I won. I won. She was popping. So you got to show up everybody. It ain't about just the the artists that are signed. You know what yeah. I mean? I come out and show love for the you indie do. artists, for the you new do. artists, for the. And do you work with the new artists? Yeah, we. I give out every time I nowadays. The last few years, every time I judged a competition, I would give the winner or winners. A free Amadeus track. Well, I'm waiting on my Amadeus track because right, so. I want to top my shit. I ain't get no yeah, Amadeus yeah. track. I, I might, I might, was, I wasn't do that. Then. Well, shit, we I was gonna come up. Well, we gonna rewind. Well, you know what I'm saying. Rewind, but select it, though. You, bring it back. You, you, you earned it. <laughs> man. You, you earned it. You earned it. So, what, what Jason Bourne? Uh, Jason Bourne got me. My guys, you hear this shit, my guys? Jason Bourne and Amadeus said they got me. For why it's a team. Entertainment TV, yeah, Miss Goldie, me, YouTube Space New York, Platinum Producer, Amadeus, Platinum Boy Music, Bad Boy in the Building. We got everything in the building. Miss Goldie, to you, it is such a pleasure. In New York City, we out of here. Bronx. BX. Put the put the Bronx. You no, know, he fake from the Bronx. Like, what do you mean? City Island. He from City Island. That's City Island, real. <laughs> He not from the real Bronx. JB, he was City Island Real. He you saw the video. City Island Real now. You saw the videos. My favorite place, Seafood City. I'm coming in with that. You see the video. Like Bobby Weavers in Seafood City. <laughs> we good? And we out. That was awesome.